Hello, I'm Linda Kincaid. We are following multiple terror attacks this hour. An attack on tourists at a beach resort in Tunisia. In France, an attack at a gas factory. And in Kuwait, a bombing at a mosque. Now, we begin in Tunisia, where security forces are still battling gunmen who opened fire as people relaxed on the beach. More than two dozen people are dead. Uh, Robin Krill is following this breaking news from Nairobi, Kenya. And Majid Nawaz joins us from London. He's the co-founder and chairman of the Quillam Foundation and a former member of a global Islamist party. We'll start first with Robin. And uh, Robin, we understand from witness reports that people ran from the beach as the gunmen opened fire at this resort location. The death toll continues to rise. What is the latest? The latest death toll we have is 27 people killed in this attack, a one gunman killed as well. They were using AK-47s when they opened up on uh, people uh, relaxing on beach chairs and on, and on beach towels on the beach. Uh, they also, they're also reporting that one of those gunmen has fled, which is why the entire area is on lockdown. So we've been speaking to eyewitnesses who are holed up in their hotel rooms. Um, even if they weren't in the exact hotel, the Imperial that was attacked, they've been asked to go into their hotel rooms um, and keep themselves inside locked up because there is apparently still someone uh, outstanding, a gunman outstanding that they're trying to find. Uh, tourism makes up 7% 7 7 of Tunisia's GDP, so really attacking people on the beach during the busiest time of the tourist season um, in the middle of the day. There would have been children there, there would have been the elderly, elderly there. This is really sending a clear message um, of, of, of hatred and, and really sending a clear message to both the West and to Tunisia, who has had a, a number of uh, young men uh, leaving uh, in droves, according to the foreign ministry, to join uh, groups such as the Islamic State. This is sending a clear message to them. Okay, Robin, and let's uh, go back to Majid Nawaz. Uh, we know in Tunisia that there are a number of pro-jihadi movements. We know that at least 3,000 people have gone to fight in Syria and Iraq. At least 500 have returned there. How strong is this radical Islamist ideology? Well, I think we're, what we're dealing with, unfortunately, is a global jihadist insurgency. This, uh, this, uh, the underpinnings of these attacks, which appear to be coordinated, and ISIS has been promising for a while that they will be striking in the holy month of Ramadan to mark the year anniversary of their so-called caliphate, which, if we recall, was, was created last Ramadan, this time last year. Um, and, and so uh, we've got these attacks, but what's really underlying them is this global jihadist insurgency, and, and that's based on an ideological current. I call it the Islamist current, and it has a vast appeal among many disenfranchised, angry young Muslims across the world. And uh, many are motivated enough to get up and leave their countries of origin to travel on its behalf. You mentioned Tunisia. 3,000 or more have gone from Tunisia to join ISIS. Uh, we've had attacks simultaneously in France and, of course, out of European countries. France has a, uh, 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 one of the highest proportions of fighters that have left that country to join ISIS as well. And that indicates that, in fact, ISIS is using its foreign fighters now. And where it's on the defensive inside Iraq and Syria, it's able to strike at soft targets targets in Western and other countries to create destabilization to serve its own purposes. The real long-term solution to this, I'm afraid, uh, because there isn't any short-term solution, is that we have to, our mission statement must be, to make this Islamist ideology as unattractive as Soviet communism has now become.